Hello and welcome to my video all about how to add a marbled pattern to paper. I'm going to be demonstrating four different methods and I'm going to list those methods on screen now so that you can fast forward to them depending on which ones you're interested in. My personal favourites were the alcohol ink and shaving foam methods but the other two techniques certainly have potential as well. Okay so we're going to start with the alcohol ink method. As with all these methods, you want to protect your work surface first. With this method in particular, you might want to wear gloves too, because alcohol inks really do stain skin, and anything else that it comes into contact with. You'll also need a plastic tray or container that can hold at least one inch of water. Kitchen towel and a cocktail stick will also come in handy. These are the alcohol inks I'm going to be using and they come in raspberry, pool and sunshine colours. They give off vapours so you want to make sure you've got good ventilation whilst you're doing this. Simply add about one inch of tap water to your container. Ideally you want it to be about room temperature but it doesn't really matter as long as it's not an extreme temperature. Then all you do is add drops of alcohol ink to make pretty patterns. It's actually very fun and satisfying to do this because as you add the drop, it spreads out and makes an interesting effect. I'm personally not going to use any high quality or specialist paper for this. I'm just going to use some budget white copier paper. I've cut an A4 sheet down into pieces that are a little smaller than the container. And all I'm going to do is when I've made a pattern that I like, I'm going to slowly and carefully drop the piece of paper on top of the ink. You don't want to throw it down too quickly because this will disturb and distort the ink. Make sure all of the paper is in contact with the water so that there are no air bubbles. You then wait a short while for the paper to absorb the ink and then you can peel the paper off the water. You can do this with your fingers but I used a paint stirrer to help me. And as you can see, the alcohol inks create a very vibrant and colourful result. The best paper to use for marbling is an absorbent paper that's not so thin that it'll tear easily. And also, ideally, you want to buy unsized or uncoated paper. So for instance, you wouldn't buy acid-free paper or anything that's had a coating added to it to change its characteristics, such as its absorbency. Types of paper I've seen recommended include cotton paper and rice paper. However, what I would say is experiment with papers you already have before you experiment with buying new paper. Okay, so once you've made one print, you can leave it to one side to dry. Then you can just add more ink to the water to make another pattern. This time I give the inks a bit of a swirl with a cocktail stick before I add the paper. And as you can see, this creates more of a marbled look. And finally, I repeated this method again, but this time I used some thin watercolour card. As you can see, it produces a nice effect, but I had problems with air bubbles. 
and that's because if you use card, obviously it has less flexibility. So it's harder for all of the surface to have contact with the water. This is why you want to use quite thick paper, but not so thick that it becomes inflexible. And here you can see the alcohol ink marbling after it's dried. And you can see that the colour hasn't faded. And now we're on to the nail polish method, which has been a bit hit and miss to say the least. Before I tried this method for the first time, I read a few tutorials and also watched a few videos. People mainly commented that they couldn't get this method to work, particularly that they couldn't get the nail polish to spread over the water, which was also something I struggled with. Most tutorials recommend using room temperature water, which is what I did for this first demo. I first added some drops of the lavender polish and as you can see that spread out nicely over the surface of the water. Then I added some pink nail polish which didn't spread out at all. Then I added some clear nail polish which also didn't really spread out. And then I went back to the first colour that I used. And you can see that it reacts completely differently this time round. So when I add the nail polish first it spreads out, but just a minute later it doesn't spread out at all. This is because the nail polish that was put on first has already dried and created a plasticky film over the surface of the water. This stops the nail polish that was added later getting in contact with the water. And then even when you think you've removed all the nail polish, as you can see when I tap it with my brush there's still that plasticky layer. And so I replace the water and I try again, this time with the pink first. As you can see, the first dot spreads out and then the dots furthest from the first one spread out the most. And this is the problem with this method. It seems to just take seconds for the first dot of nail polish to dry and create that plasticky film. And then lastly, the silver doesn't really spread at all. So once again, I use the cocktail stick to remove the polish and then replace the water, this time with warm water. This time I add the silver nail polish first and it does spread out, which proves that all of the nail polishes I have actually work and they do spread across the water, but only if they're the first ones to be used. This first colour then dries quite quickly, then blocks most of the following colours from contacting the water. I'm now going to show you what it looks like to transfer this pattern onto paper. I'm just using some white copier paper and I just put it straight onto the water surface in one motion. Then when you take the paper out, you can see that the plastic film now covers the paper. There's no marbling effect, but it does give a shiny finish. The advantage to the nail polish method is that you can add this plasticky film onto all kinds of materials, such as plastic or glass ornaments, or even false nails. I then give it one more go, this time with cold water just to see if the temperature of the water has any effect at all. This time I tried to be much quicker. I added the pink first, then the silver, and tried to mix it with the cocktail stick, but this didn't work. I then transferred the pattern to some paper, which I think was slightly better, but still not marbled. So in conclusion, the water temperature doesn't seem to make any difference and I just can't seem to find a way of stopping the nail polish from drying too quickly. It seems to dry only a few seconds after it's been added to the water, which just isn't enough time to make any patterns. I've read that it's down to the nail polish you have and it needs to be a new nail polish, not an old gloopy one, and it needs to be quite a thin polish. So you might ask, well, how do I know if it's a thin polish? Well, 
Good question, I think it's more down to look and you just need to experiment with any polishes that you do have at home. You can also buy something called nail polish thinner which should help the process but I haven't used it myself. And here you can see the papers after they've completely dried. And now we're on to the third method which uses acrylic paint. I'm just using some cheap acrylic paint bottles and I first tested to see if the acrylic paint would float. Which as you can see, it does not. So I then did some research to find out how you can make acrylic paint float. And the answer seemed to be to use liquid laundry starch. You can make your own from cornstarch and water, or you can buy it. I personally mixed my own using some powdered laundry starch and I mixed it according to the instructions on the packet. You then need to mix a bit of paint with some water to dilute it in order for it to float on top of the liquid starch. You want to dilute the paint until it's the consistency of whole milk. If you have an ink dropper or a pipette that you can use, that will make the next step easier. Just use the dropper or pipette to apply the diluted paint to the surface of the starch. What I did instead was water down the paint and then just flick it onto the surface of the starch. Then when you're ready you just put a piece of paper onto the top of the surface in one smooth motion. Leave it a short while and then peel it off to reveal your pattern. I then added more paint, mixed it around with the cocktail stick and then did another print. And here you can see the pieces of paper after they've dried. And last but not least, we're on to the shaving foam method, which I'm going to demonstrate using acrylic paints and acrylic inks. For this, I'm going to use some shaving foam, of course, as well as some gold and pink acrylic paints and some Liquitex acrylic inks in violet and blue. First, what you need to do is put water into your container as usual, but this time you then add some shaving foam to cover most of the water surface. What you need is enough foam to cover the entire surface of the water with a thin layer. I then use my cocktail stick to break up all the lumps in the shaving foam to form a smooth layer all over the surface of the water. I then sprinkled some gold and some pink acrylic paint on top of the foam. and then use my cocktail stick to mix it around a bit to give it that marbled effect. I then placed a piece of paper on top and then waited a short while for the paint to absorb into the paper. When I removed the paper, I kind of pulled it down over the side of the container in order to remove as much foam as possible. As you can see, there's a sort of marbled pattern that's appeared but it's quite pale. So if you want a more vivid result using acrylic paints, I personally would recommend the liquid starch method more. I then moved on to using my acrylic inks. So I added some violet and blue drops of ink, swirled the drops round with my cocktail stick, Pressed a piece of paper on top and then once the inks had been absorbed I removed the paper making sure to scrape off the foam as I go. And as you can see this is a much better result 
with a vibrant marbled pattern. I then added some more drops of ink, as well as some gold acrylic paint, just to see if they work well together. I then swirled the colours around using the cocktail stick, and also went back and forth in parallel lines to make a feathered pattern. I then place the paper on top and make sure that all of the paper is in contact with the foam, just to make sure there are no gaps in the pattern or air bubbles. And then I remove the piece of paper. And as you can see, it's a really lovely pattern with an added golden shimmer from the acrylic paint. You can then leave these to dry. And here you can see the pieces of paper once they've dried. Once I'd made that last print, I used my cocktail stick to add the feathered pattern back into the foam without adding any more ink or paint. And then I made another print and you can see the result here. It's paler and more pastel coloured, but it's still really pretty. So I would always recommend doing two prints in a row without adding any ink or paint in between because you get some very interesting effects and results. One thing I then used this marble paper for was for covering miniature books, as you can see here. And if you're interested, I'll be making a tutorial on how to make these books very soon. And that's it, that's my demonstration of four marbling methods. I really hope you have fun trying these out and thank you very much for watching.